Right, so this is a much different position than I've been in a few years. I, I used to be the MC, and I, I will say that it was uh, a lot easier than this. Um, I'd like to first congratulate TJ, Pete, and Ken on being inducted tonight into the MBCA Hall of Fame. It is truly an honor to be included in a class of such distinguished and decorated coaches. I'd also like to thank Wayne Hancock, Steve Frecker down at the end, and Justin Richards, the president, because I know all too well how much work and effort goes into this night, as well as the rest of the MBCA and the executive board for electing me to the Hall of Fame. And it is such a joy to see such a nice event every single year come together with this group of people. I am humbled and honored to be part of such an unbelievable group of people that Frank has alluded to. And I think you can tell by the passion of all of these players, these coaches up here, that to be included in this group is truly a joy. I have been fortunate enough to have worked as an executive board member, and as we said, a president for this amazing organization. Working on this board throughout the years has actually inspired me as a coach. Many years ago, when Coach Dan Delcinos from Chicopee Comp introduced me to the MBCA, I had no idea that I'd ever be standing here before you as a Hall of Fame member. The coaches who have been honored here over the years, along with the members that are here tonight, have taught me to continue to teach and continue to teach me with their passion, insight, and commitment that I can only hope to achieve. As I look around in the crowd, and I see Tommy Shushnik, George Cornwell, Ed Freckman, Peter Farr, and especially my high school basketball coach, Mike Gothier, who was a mentor of mine. I am truly in awe of what you people do, and I am grateful to have become friends with all of you. I am also grateful for the experiences that have been provided through this association. Even though we were really supposed to be coaching, fellow coach Peach Moscarello and myself took the chance while we were coaching the senior all-star game at Fenway Park to play a game of catch, a memory I will never forget. I have also been fortunate enough to develop relationships with people of character, integrity, and passion for the game of baseball, like Judy Walden Scarfile, and like many people, these people that I'm mentioning do not want any recognition. But Judy has an impressive baseball resume, one that has spanned over 50 years, and she told me earlier today that she started at three years old. <laughs> and this included 24 years as the Cape Cod League president. Judy has gone in baseball where no other woman, and many men, have never gone before. She is currently included as part of an exhibit at Cooperstown, and she's probably wondering why I'm talking so much about her. But it is with great pride that I make a point to show my teams that visit the Hall of Fame all of her achievements. And I do look forward to Judy's many, many emails in regard to coordinating the publications and the advertisings for this event. And I try to follow her example of being humble, conscientious and caring in all things she does. Judy is among a list of people that I have the utmost respect for, and many of whom are sitting right here at this head table, and also out in the crowd. At the top of this list, and I think you will all know why, Frank Carey, and he's shaking his head again because he hates all of this, <coughs> but he's at the top of the heap for me. Like, the people before me, when you meet Frank, you realize that he does dominate the room. <laughs> and I'm very, very honored to be receiving an award on the same night that Frank is. I've learned so much from Frank, from organizing senior all-star games, to attending the National Coaches Clinic in St. Louis, and to helping him with the Jimmy Fund event at Fenway Park. Frank has been an overwhelming influence on me. And I think you can all think this is the truth, that if you truly want to be entertained, find a seat next to Frank tonight at the bar. <laughs> There's some stories that I cannot recite here, but we might be lucky enough to get a couple of them later tonight. The great game of baseball brings us all together tonight, but it's the relationships and friendships and family that is really what this is all about. Family 
and creating a feeling of family within baseball program is what has driven me throughout the years. Wins and losses are forgotten, but it's the people and the players that leave lasting memories. I have been blessed to have coached so many great players and to have had so many dedicated assistant coaches, and I'm truly overwhelmed by the players, coaches, and families who have made the time to come out here tonight and celebrate this honor. It's not a short trip from South Hadley High School. Um, thank you very much for coming. From our first ever Western Mass Championship team, Ryan Hortzman, Nate Bergeron, and Jason Burke are here tonight. They embrace the feeling of family and passion within the team, and they truly changed the course of South Hadley baseball for the years that have followed. I will say it also helped to have Ryan, who threw in the mid-90s, attended St. John's and is still pursuing a professional baseball career. Always a helpful little thing when you're a coach to have that. Best of luck to Ryan as he continues that dream. Thank you guys for all that you did for the program, but more importantly, thank you for becoming such great people and people that I can now call friends. And although winning championships are not what high school coaches need to have to be impactful, it certainly does help. In having these memories uh, of when our team was fortunate enough to win the school's first ever state championship, those memories will never be forgotten. It was an incredible feat by a school of our size, and that had every bit to do with the will to win as much as it did as the talent on the field. And this was sort of evident in the fact that we finished our season one game under 500, something that has never been achieved in the state of Massachusetts before. A feat, uh, it was, and it is with great pleasure to have Connor Sheridan and Mike Croak tonight here from that team they not only brought a team together, but they also made baseball the sport to play for years to come. I was talking with the Plymouth North coach earlier today, who was gracious enough to continue to talk to me because that was the team that we defeated. <laughs> and Dwayne told me that when Mike, our catcher, threw the guy out at first base, I mean, in the first inning, that he knew he was in a little bit of trouble. And that's how that team played. They played without fear. Mike and Connors were captains on that team, and they are such driven and passionate people, and it was a joy to coach them and an honor to have them here tonight. It was these championship teams that laid the groundwork for the years to come for players like Justin Kleber, Mario Oliveira, Sean Doyle, my nephew James Foley, and my son Drew Foley, to attain some of the best records that Tiger baseball has ever seen. The group that I just mentioned, that we're all able to attend tonight, not only made an impact while playing, but to this day, they continue to give back to the program, volunteering whenever they can. In this team, this, in this upcoming season, James, my nephew, Sean, and Drew will be helping with the JV program. It's always nice to have former players come back, and especially nice to have family come back into the coaching staff. Through all of my seasons of coaching, some of which were great and some of which were not so great, it was my family that made coaching more than just some part, fun part-time job. I am so happy to have so many family and friends here tonight. To sit back and talk baseball on a January night, that's the best thing about this whole ceremony. I'm sure that during the 2012 state championship season, of which I was so fortunate to have my dad, who's here tonight, keeping score for every single game in the dugout with me. My mom never thought she'd be part of so many baseball lineup suggestions, strategy talk as we all sat by the pool, but there she was every step of the way, never complaining that we always talked and still always talk just about baseball. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> baseball and coaching has always been a huge part of our family, and I'm so happy to have both of my cousins, Brett and Brian, who are here tonight, as well as my brother, Kevin, as assistants throughout all of these years. Although I'm the one standing up here today, it is my brother who oftentimes is the brains behind much of the coaching work that I do. We are very fortunate to work at the same job, and we've worked together for 25 years. And I have to say that there hasn't been many lunches that go by that talking baseball doesn't come up. 
He's not one for recognition, but I'd like to take this moment to thank him for all that he's done for me, both outside and inside the game of baseball. He really wouldn't like to be out here. <laughs> and as with most coaches, it's the assistants and volunteers that help coaches make an impact on a team, and I'm no different. Volunteers like my good friend Dave Sadaka, who's helped me transform our facilities with his passion and knowledge from installing new sod, sprinkler systems, PA system, as well as a 35-foot college-level scoreboard that I think you can see from here if you look really <laughs> hard. Thank you, Dave, for all you've done with us. You've made our program what it is today. As I mentioned, I have been blessed to have family members as assistants, but I have also had some of the best coaches that I've ever met. And that starts with Eric Castanway, who's now the athletic director at the high school and will no, no, no longer be able to coach with me, although I'm going to tap his arm for BP because we definitely need extra arms out there. And he's coached at every level with me, started freshman JV, and last year was at a varsity assistant. And Ben Sabs and Jason Burke, both former players, who have now become coaches with me. Ben was honored this afternoon as one of the coaches by the MBCA as an assistant coach of the year award. I am grateful that Ben has stayed with me for the past 10 seasons at the varsity level when he certainly could have gone ahead and taken coaching jobs at any time. Ben, it has been a pleasure to coach with you, and I cannot thank you enough for all that you've done for the program. You've come a long way since we first met when the newspaper snapped a, a picture of us when I, you were eight years old and Coach Gothier was running a clinic, and there was this little boy throwing with great form, I might add, <laughs> to all these years later being by my side in the dugout. It's not a coincidence that since Benny has been coaching with me, we've won four league titles, two Western Mass titles, and a state title. And Jason, who's now my JV coach, was a bat boy for me when he was about this tall, and his older brother played. He was also a part of the 2010 Western Mass team, and he's always been a huge part of this program. And the fact that if you've been with me for over 20 years in some capacity is an amazing feat. Thank you for your dedication and commitment, and I'm very proud to have worked with you all these years and to see what out an outstanding teacher, educator, and coach, and a person that you have come. Thank you, Jason. My family, as you can tell, means a lot to me, and I've been very fortunate to have both my kids as part of my coaching career. My children, Drew and Maddie, were always fixtures in the dugout as they grew up, and from talking to a lot of the MBCA members, they've been fixtures at this MBCA clinic since they were in car seats and it was our little family vacation to go swimming at the hotel during, during the clinic sessions. And as a coach, I was fortunate to be able to coach my son Drew. And as a dad, I can truly say that those years coaching Drew were the most gratifying and I'll never forget all the memories that you gave me. And if coaching my son was not enough, I was blessed with a daughter who wanted to be involved in her own way. And I'm so proud to this day, each time Maddie goes up into the press box and announces all of our home games. Although winning games and impacting players has been gratifying, my most proud moment as a coach was when Maddie announced all the players at Doubleday Field in Cooperstown. And then in that game, Drew had three hits and finished the game on the mound with a win during his senior year. At that moment, I realized that it was a moment that I might never forget. At the end of the game, I looked up into the crowd and I saw my wife Amy, my in-laws Bev and Pete Gagney, my mom and dad, my brother and his wife Kim, and I realized that that experience was the ultimate combination of bringing my passion for the baseball and passion for my family together at one time. It was a moment that I wish I could just bottle. I got through that part. <laughs> and finally, and most importantly, I'd like to recognize my wife, Amy. She has been with me for every season that I've ever coached, and without her compassion, 
understanding, and complete willingness to let me spend hours upon hours upon hours at the field, I would not be standing here before you tonight. I mean no disrespect to any of my assistant coaches. I really don't, Ben. But she has been more of a sounding board and source of advice than anyone that has ever sat with me in the dugout. She herself was an outstanding coach who gave up her school, high school coaching career in both soccer and basketball to raise our kids and allow me to coach. This sacrifice, which is oftentimes gone unnoticed to people on the outside looking in, has never gone unnoticed by me. And I thank you for everything that we have been able to achieve with South Hadley Baseball. It has been and continues to be to the benefit of all the players that I have coached to have you helping me out. From lineup decisions that I'm sure you did not want to talk about for hours, to helping me with parents in tough decisions that all coaches are faced with, it has been because of this ability to bring this stuff home that has kept me passionate about coaching and teaching players who have come through the program. That was a tough part too. In closing, thank you to everyone who has made time to come here tonight. And thank you to my family, I love you all. And thank you to, I wanted to mention one last person who I had mentioned earlier in the speech, but Dan Del Chinos is a Hall of Fame coach, coach who has over 600 victories himself. And Danny is the one that got me into the NBCA. I was fortunate, he's unable to make it tonight because of the long drive, but I was fortunate enough to see him for a three hour little stint on Thursday before I came down here. He not only got me involved in this interim organization, but he has always and always will be the gold standard in coaching. His integrity, unselfishness, and passion to help others are traits that I have tried to model my coaching career after to this day. Even though Coach D is not make, coaching any longer, he's still making a difference. And making a difference is something that every high school coach should be striving for. Thank you very much.